It's the strangest thing because even from that moment that I, I, I regained consciousness on the road, I kind of thought I was going to be fine. I'm Paul Fairhurst. I'm a C567 incomplete quadriplegic. I went out cycling one morning. I wasn't going particularly fast. No other pit car or vehicle was involved. Um, just one of those things. I flew over the handlebars um, and I landed on my head here. I then regained consciousness by the side of the road and then I immediately realized that I, I couldn't move at all from um, the, the neck downwards. The bones in my vertebrae with the impact on the head sliced down into the um, discs and they exploded. So I had a, a spinal cord injury. Before the surgery I, I had almost no movement. At the date of the injury, I had a less than 10% chance of ever walking again. It was about 10 weeks after the accident before I was able to take any step with no walking aid. Um, and I know I'm lucky. Most of the time, I, you know, my life was just lying there on, in the bed, staring up at the ceiling and being moved um, from one x-ray or MRI or procedure to, to the next one. Sitting up on the edge of the bed for the first time was a major thing. Um, it was a little scary for the people around me. I think I did actually topple backwards the first time that I tried it. Um, each individual element of progression might have been small in some ways, but enormous in others. I recall our first meeting was at a party. You walked in and I noticed that you had a little bit of a limp and I thought, hmm, this guy and I are kind of in the same camp. So I felt emboldened to ask you what happened and you shared with me what had happened. And then as soon as you said, Johnny Walker, my mind said, keep walking. Then I said, wow, we should keep walking together. We've come full circle a year later. We're going off to the deck. Ladakh is a province way up in the north of India on the Tibetan Plateau. We'll be in Ladakh for around 14 days. We're going across the valleys and mountain passes. It will be hard work, it will be physically demanding. Going over um, rocky terrain is not necessarily easy. Stepping in scree and sand and stuff where you sink down is no fun because my crutches will go in first and then they will sink down. I think we'll get to the trailhead for the trek. And honestly, I think we've done half the journey. This is the beginning. To be here right now, it just, it just feels fantastic to have reached this point, yeah. Off we go. I look at what Gregory's done. And he spent his entire life demonstrating that because of a physical disability, you can achieve extraordinary things. And that's the whole story of Gregory's life as I look at it. I've had paralysis from the waist down for the last 55 years. My memory of polio is quite vague as a child. I mean, you're a kid. You grow up being a kid, and then someday you go, oh, wait a minute, my friends are running around outside playing kick the can or tag, and I'm hopping around on crutches. Then I realized that that's life. And all of us have to go through things like that, whether it's an operation, whether it's an exam, you take your knocks and you get back up, then you carry on. Keep walking has been my motto, if you will, since, since day one. They call them orthotics, and uh, yeah, they, they've carried me all over the world. The challenge of hiking on my own, under my own steam, that inspires me and, and challenges me and keeps me going. It's going to be a lot more challenging than I think I thought it would be. I don't think anything prepares you for this. I think mean, this is just something else. Trying to get my body through the level of pain that I encountered, that hurt. Um, at the end, I mean, that hurt. 
it would be nice to just lie on the floor now for a little while. And... Truth be told, when I met Paul, I actually felt that you needed a little push. And I kind of sensed that it'd be good to put a little fire under your you-know-what, and you know, I don't have any sidekicks to go climbing mountains with, so yeah. what do you think? Yeah, yeah very much the, the idea of we go do something and it's not a walk in the park, it's something that has to be challenging, meaningful. That was a gauntlet. It's an enormous amount of work. It's, um, it, it, it's huge physical demand to, to prepare for this, um, and mental, uh, and emotional. So why do it? Because I still have this belief that there's something enormously exciting that's coming my way through my life now, and I think that this trek is part of that. I expected just this enormous sky in the mountains, and this is it. This is it. Oh. Gives me a real shiver. On that last big climb, whatever it was, 3,700 to 3,900 meters. Up a slope that both of us naively underestimated, I think. So, so Rocky Outcrop, yeah. we walked directly below those crags right there and top out the prayer flags in about an hour's time. Three years, really, really fucking hard work. Here. Must have been about uh, a few hundred meters away from the top, and then I turned back and I looked back down at Greg, who was coming up it sideways. And I just thought, Jesus, you know, look at that. Look at that. That's, that's just an awesome achievement. I cannot tell you how much I admire you, my friend. <laughs> you made it. When I got to the top of the pass, I, um, yeah, I, I got a little emotional because that night I spent the whole night with the shivers. You know, it's the first time I, in my life, in a way, I thought I might not finish something I started. Three years after a spinal cord injury that left me paralyzed from the shoulders downwards and with no sensation or very little, facing a prognosis of a very bleak future, after three years of extraordinary hard work. I walked 35 kilometers at high altitude in very difficult terrain sometimes. And on this track, I've come to understand how strong this thing has made me become. That's three years. internal, I think, growth that I experienced getting to the end of that 35 Ks, um, getting up one mountain and depth another, and like, the re realization that you know, life is a series of mountains, and that's where the learning is. It's in that valley, and the effort to get back from one back up into another that I think taught us both a lot. To me, um, mentorship means mutual inspiration and support. Making each other just reconsider the way that you approach your life. Um, I think we've done a lot of that for each other on this, this track. Being together, sharing that moment, and both of us soul searching, both of us on our own journeys, I never had that. I never had another person that was physically challenged. And then we could just dive into things that you know, probably we never would do with other people. So finishing what we set out to do, I think, feels good. That always feels good. And it's a reminder that that's who I am. I don't quit. I don't stop. I don't give up. And I don't think I'll ever forget this experience. This thing has made me stronger than I ever imagined that I could be.
I'm very, very grateful for that. I have to live life with, for the foreseeable future at least, quite a significant number of physical difficulties still. But for now, given that I can do this, I'm okay with that.